All right, what is up, everybody? Shout Scout is year zero one three here, coming in with another list build. This time, I'm going to be covering the Shadow Collective and going over quite a few different lists today to you know kind of make up for a little bit of time and to give you guys a good video on you know different things and some skirmish lists kind of after I go over some more kind of you know longer or bigger lists, more competitive. I think just because there's more ways to do an 800 point list and there are a 500 point list and there's kind of really four objects and objectives that you're trying to do rather than a plethora of different ones so i'm you know i usually tend and like to tend to make 800 point lists just because again it's a lot more competitive and you're going to find more tournaments with 800 points but you know I do like making skirmish lists, and if you guys do want more skirmish lists, definitely go ahead and subscribe or sign up for the Discord and put your you know skirmish lists in here. I'll check these more than I do on Facebook or anyone else, or anywhere else, I should say. And I'm just trying to help everyone out, and if anyone you know has questions or anything like that, just go ahead and put it in here. And then, you know, I'm thinking about an AAT gunline video, or at least lists with the AAT in it, just to give you guys more ideas and you know if there are other variations you know i've given ideas for lists and people have made different variations off of the lists that i have that are really cool and really good so i you know think that there's a lot of stuff with 800 point lists to do but yeah sign up here and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to the channel go ahead and leave a like down below and let me know what you think let me know different lists that you're interested in and we'll go from there and then if you haven't already you can go ahead Go ahead and head to theburnacademy.com and subscribe for 15 bucks now for basically three, four, five, six day week workout plans, corrective exercise plans, 30 minute torture stuff, at home workouts, abs and core, you know, all the other stuff that I'll come out with, coaching videos, soon to be a macro calculator. I have meal plans and a bunch of ways to track your progress. So it's basically like having a personal trainer in your pocket in case you want to go to any gym and basically look like you know what you're doing and make sure you're doing it right so you prevent any injury in the future. But all right, so let's go ahead and get into the lists. So this list, as you can see, is demoralizing vehicles. It's 10 activations with an eight point bid. There's a way that if you really want to make it a little bit more of a bid, you can, and we'll talk about it. But I want to just kind of go over what you can expect and what to do kind of with this list. So this list is kind of an inspiration off of, you know, Friday Night Fights and some other stuff that I have seen. And then next list is kind of similar to a list that I played, not quite exactly a list that I played, but I just, you know, for the Shadow Collective, they're doing really well. And I think that a lot of people are really enjoy playing them, are really enjoying playing them. And yeah, so I just, you know, figured that we would kind of talk a little bit about them a little bit more and maybe some vehicle lists for Shadow Collective. So in here, you'll have three swoop bikes with comms jammer, mostly because these swoop bikes, so with the cover one, they're doing pretty well, at least gaining some sort of cover, and then they'll get a dodge when they don't get an order or name, whichever one you want. But if you have a dodge and then you have cover, they hopefully are going to last a little bit longer than normal. You do have reinforcements keyword on here, so you can just place these at the very, very end after all of your enemy or all of your opponent's units have basically deployed that also don't have reinforcements. And then so speeder one, so when you're moving, you can ignore height one terrain or lower. So you don't have to worry about, you know, <clears throat> difficult terrain for the most part, unless it says vehicles can't go through it. You do have overrun and you do have the range one to two pistol, which has no front arc. It's just any direction. So, which is really, really nice that these just don't have to worry about front arc stuff. You just are trying to get in and run over units. You're just trying to do the overrun attacks and the blaster pistol. So a good way to use it, you know, there's a possibility of being able to do three different attacks with the swoop bikes. If you have two bikes and you're getting super, super close to where you need to be. So, you know. You would move them if you were to, if your, the way you moved were to go through a unit or you land on a unit after displacement and stuff, you would go with your overrun, which would just be a red and two white, regardless that the fact that there are two in there. 
because it's overrun one. When you take another move, you can do the overrun again if you either have crossed through again a unit or you displace them. And it has to be from the unit leader. It can't be from the other bike. And then after that, after your compulsory move and after your normal move, you can make a shot in any direction. So you can also shoot who you just did an overrun attack against. Overrun's not going to give any suppression because it is not an attack technically. It's just a keyword. But the heavy blaster pistol will give that unit suppression. Also, because of the raiding party leader right here, each friendly vehicle, basically, is going to gain demoralized. You know, all the vehicles in the Shadow Collective are going to have this. So you're going to, every vehicle is going to gain demoralized. So you've got three bikes that each time they activate, they're going to be handing out a suppression to whoever. And if you can get all three in range of a single unit or two different units or whatever, handing out that suppression is really nice, especially shooting at them. You're pretty much going to be able to dish out two suppression every turn if you can last that long and make a shot. Now, the AA5 speeder trucks are also going to be able to hand out one suppression. So you're just handing out suppression for just activating. You're not taking suppression at all because they're vehicles, obviously. And your your trucks are divided. You have two different ones, obviously, and you have the frenzied gunner one with the unorthodox tactician, refurbished gunk droid, and the quad laser. So what I would kind of stick to doing with this truck is it's got the refurbished gunk droid for the shield tokens. It's got the quad laser, got the frenzied gunner to make sure you're doing more with the laser. And then it's obviously got the unorthodox tactician. If you want to make it cheaper, you could put the backworld medic on there instead but because we mostly are going to have just kind of pike foot soldiers right here, then I'd try to hand out as many aims as possible, especially since they don't surge offensively. Or, yeah, aims as possible, yeah. So you, I would set up this bus, cutting off a lane, cutting off an objective, doing what it can to harass your opponent with the quad laser and have as much shield to it as possible while hand, handing out aims. Then you'll be able to unload one of your Black Sun Enforcers with the Magnet Enforcer, the Black Sun Vigo, with targeting scopes, which I have two units of because both of them are going to be in the buses. And at targeting scopes, they already do have precise ones. So when you spend a name token, you're going to reroll up to one additional dice. Well, now that you have targeting scopes on there, you're going to be able to roll two additional dice. So with every aim, you're rolling four dice. Now that's important because you're going to be having at least, so eight dice here just from the unit itself plus the magnet enforcer giving another three black and then the black sun vigo giving another two of these you're gonna have what 13 dice that's being shot at range one spending you know having no surges you're gonna need to spend those aims so rolling as many dice for the independent aim that you do get if you even take another aim then that's even better but because you get the aim Precise one and maybe targeting scopes, if you have a full unit, it makes a lot of sense. Now, if you don't have a full unit, maybe you just have the the shotgun guy, the scatter gun, and maybe you don't have the black sun enforcer, targeting scopes isn't necessary. But because I think that I have, you know, both personnel slots taken, I think an extra targeting scopes would be very, very helpful. And regardless if they're at range one, they're rolling 10 dice at range two. And then for each aim, you're rolling four. And you have a 50-50 shot with those black dice, and then even less with the white dice. Now, the speeder truck with the rating party leader just has unorthodox and the back world medic, because this one doesn't necessarily have to get into range of anyone. It, it can to, to maximize the amount of suppression that you're dishing out. But it's just trying to heal, and it's trying to hand out aims as well now other than that you have your pike syndicate capo with your two pike foot soldiers who can do other objectives that are needed they're going to be able to hopefully hold on to as many aims as possible and they have the extra pike syndicate foot soldier just to give them something extra if you wanted you could you know sacrifice the range three pike foot soldier 
the the single black for two red at range one for one more point. It's just up to you. If you want, if you feel like they're going to be getting up close and personal, then maybe upgrade with the Electro Whip. But for the most part, to save points and to get that range three, I went with the Pike Syndicate Foot Soldier. Now, <clears throat> that's 10 activations. Tons of suppression hopefully being dished out through the swoop bikes. You're and your speeder trucks now they you have five units that don't care about suppression and then five units that kind of do but you have two black sun enforcers who are are going to pretty much be in the aa5 trucks for a little bit so they're not going to have to be getting shot at or worry about suppression it's just your pike capo here and the foot soldiers who are really outside of the vehicle you know class or ranks and you know can take suppression and can really not benefit from that except for their danger sense now if they have two suppression they're going to be able to roll an extra white dice for each suppression they have up to two and then they can spend their dodge tokens to cancel crits which is super nice they're for the most part you kind of want them especially if they don't have courage to around a pike capo so they don't panic and then <clears throat> independent dodge is perfect for them so just went with the classic stuff here with ambush push and assault when you have to give out orders i would definitely always prioritize giving your orders out to the speeder trucks because they don't have independent so it doesn't really matter if you give them the orders now with the assault with the three pip you're probably going to want to give them to the swoop bike riders so that they can have the opportunity to activate when they need to activate and then that just kind of leaves the speeder trucks by themselves. But with push and ambush, you can give it to the speeder trucks to make sure that they can either transport properly when they need to or so forth. But yeah, prioritize giving those speeder trucks the order if you can. Now I gave breakthrough, bombing run, key positions, and payload as the objectives. With an eight-point bid, now if you want to kind of have a little bit more of a bid, you can. Maybe you take off vigilance, and that gives you 787, so you have a 13-point bid. Just kind of up to you. <clears throat> uh, breakthrough would be great because you have speeder bikes and you have two trucks that are carrying extra units. So if your trucks do go down, at least you have two units that are hopefully going to be able to get into the deployment zone. And then you also have the pikes in the back who are going to hopefully be able to shoot at incoming units. Bombing run would be great with your bikes and or... The speeder trucks, since you're prioritizing giving the orders to the speeder trucks, maybe you can give them the bombs, but they're going to be getting shot at like crazy. And you're probably going to be able to get somewhere faster with the swoop bikes since they are speed three. So that's why I'd probably give them to the bikes. Key positions, even though you don't have a Jedi, you do have the speeder trucks, which they cannot move. And if you can block off the Jedi or Sith, whoever, with those trucks and or uh, you block the objective the key position with the trucks and there's no way that the unit can really get in on that key position and they have to kind of go around even better that gives you a little bit more time and maybe an extra maybe an extra round if they don't have jump obviously but most of them will have jump and be able to kind of get through but if you know you aren't able to allow them to base the key objective or anything like that. You know, it just kind of depends on what it is in the middle. But it could really come in handy. And then you're dropping off some people. You're dropping off the Blackstone Enforcers there who could probably hopefully gang up and just take out someone with that 13 roll dice or 13 dice. And then payload would be good because the the speeder trucks could just surround your, your cart and... If anyone gets near, you've got your you've got your black suns, and then your pikes you can either go after the other payload or make sure they're setting up for your own payload, and then have your swoop bikes kind of go after whoever it is, their payload, and then hemmed in so that way you are able to really get in close. So like breakthrough, easy. Bombing run, pretty easy. Key positions, you're pretty much already there. So you have an early way to kind of cut it off for the most part and force them to go in a direction and hopefully narrow them in. And then payload, you can go. I mean, they're going to put something probably somewhere over here and you have the option to kind of do whatever. 
So not that bad. <clears throat> Danger close would also be good because then everything like bombing run breakthrough and payload would be easy to get everything in as fast as possible. You know, roll out, you do have tons of vehicles. You have five units of vehicles that can all start out here. Now, the sad thing is, is with bombing run, they have to start inside the deployment zone. So you don't want to have roll out with the bombing run. And then battle lines, obviously, just so that you've you've got plenty of space to kind of spread out and do what they need to when most clones and CIS need to ball up. This is good for you. And yeah, minefield, hostile environment. You know, compulsory vehicles don't really care about mines. With hostile environment, you've got – you're giving out as much suppression as possible, and you've got five vehicles that don't take suppression nor care about suppression. With limited viz, you don't have any snipers, and with bombing run and breakthrough, you're trying to get somewhere as fast as possible without getting shot and killed. So that would be awesome to have. And then rapid reinforcements in case you want to take the pike foot soldiers and kind of keep them – out and then only put your pike capo as the only trooper unit that's exposed onto the field you can do that you just got to be careful how you deploy your pike foot soldiers and make sure you're you're deploying them near the pike capo but at least they won't take suppression for a while and then if it is you know hostile environment you can deploy them next to terrain so yeah such a good list if anyone wants to try it out definitely let me know how it goes i think that this is awesome now, the other one I have is all about suppression as well. This time, <clears throat> I have Bosk in here with Targeting Scopes and Hunter because his weapon is suppressive, his mortar rifle, and Pierce, which is super nice. You still have three bikes with the Columns Jammer. The speeder trucks are just mostly retrofitted with, you know, the bare minimum. This The speeder truck with the Frenzied Gunner has the Gonk Droid just so it can make sure it's shooting as long as possible just to... Keep them away from the raiding party leader, just like in the last list. And the raiding party leader this time has back roll medic and unorthodox, since it's going to kind of stay in the back a little bit more <clears throat> and let the other speeder truck and the bikes go in. Then you have the Black Sun Enforcers with just the Magdat and the Black Sun Vigo to spare points. You could put targeting scopes on there, but you won't really have a bid at all. And, and maybe it doesn't matter, honestly, but who knows? You don't want to have... You probably don't want to have, you know, intercept the transmissions. You don't want to have anything mostly trooper-based because you really don't have that many troopers. So you just got to be careful with that. This is only nine activations, though. So again, you've got to have a bed. You're going to need to be careful. Maybe you don't want improvised orders. Maybe you don't want, you know, something on here to give you a little bit more of a bid just to be safe. But mostly the bit, most of the bids that I'm seeing that aren't as competitive are about six points or so. Six to ten points. So I think this is pretty good. Yeah. And is for the most part everything similar to the last list. It's just a little bit different. This one just has Bosk in it. And I'll leave I'll make sure to leave a link down below with everything there. You know, the comment chamber is the same. The Black Sun Vigo instead of any of the pikes. So there's no pikes in here. It's just Black Sun and Bosk. So it's all of your reptiles. There you go. I just figured we would put all of them together as one big happy family and then let them fight right afterwards now you know i have merciless munitions reptilian rampage and lying in wait for bosk for sure and you know ploy discretion and aggression just to make sure that i don't hand out any tokens or hand out any order tokens and then they can all get their little green tokens that they want and everything's green and reptilian yeah so that's a, i should call it all about reptilian suppression all right so let's get into some you know, skirmish lists. So this one's going to have Maul, and for the most part, I'm going to have Maul in almost all of these except for one. You can, I'm running in with the Darksaber in this one. You don't have to. You know, if you want to save points, you can. If you want to take out the Darksaber and maybe give the Black Sun Vigo lead by example, you still have four more points to kind of do with what you want. Maybe if you want to make sure the Super Commandos and Rook are moving, they only have jump as an action and then you know they'll have to succumb to any kind of terrain maybe you want environmental gear on them maybe you want prepared to pull i can't do that one sorry maybe you want recon intel on the black sun enforcers both of them so here we go let's go ahead and give recon intel to both of them because for the most part with a 500 point list you really don't care it is you're, you're really everything is the same objective and deployment and condition-wise, so 
500 points. I'm always going to do that. So this could give you a little bit different. Make sure that you are getting rid of suppression as much as possible because Blackstone have Dauntless, so they'll be able to take a suppression to do a free move action, and then they'll be able to shoot. So you'll still get your two actions, but you're going to have to give yourself a suppression to be able to do that. So if you are suppressed but not panicked, then you can give yourself that extra suppression. And you'll be able to do that at – since you're going to have Courage too. so at two – when you only have one action – that you're allowed, then you can use Dauntless, basically. And then lead by example in the Blackstone Vigo to get rid of that extra suppression, and then Maul and the Mandalorian Commandos, you know, they're going to go ham with Rook and Situational Awareness. You know, if you if you wanted to get rid of lead, lead by example or something, and maybe put the the Jetpack Rockets on there, it's range 4, Blast, Critical 1, Impact 1. Could be pretty good. It's just kind of up to you. <clears throat> I have Saber Throw, Force Push, Into the Fray, and Vigilance on Maul. Honestly, if you wanted, you don't have to go with Saber Throw. Maybe with Saber Throw, instead of Into the Fray, you wanted to go with Up Close and Personal. It's just five points instead of four, so you're going to have to get rid of maybe one of those Recon Intels. And then I just put Into the Fray because he's going to be getting in close, fast as possible. And maybe you trade Saber Throw for Burst of Speed because then with Burst of Speed, he's going to be able to get in super quick. Into the fray is going to kick in much faster. He's hopefully going to be in melee. You hopefully have a dodge on him. You can use force push. This is going to really get him in melee fast. And he's still going to have, you know, that four red, four white, impact two, pierce two, which is going to kind of almost equal out to the amount of black dice you'd have in the dark saber. Except in the dark saber, he's going to gain surge to crit. So and honestly, it's just kind of up to you. I think that this is going to be better. And so. That's in my opinion. But yeah, this is, you know, Super Commandos are going with Maul just to make sure that they do what they can to get that extra retinue because Rook is going to have retinue with Maul. So if she's at range 1 or 2 of Maul, she's going to gain an aim or a dodge. And if it's also, you know, if she doesn't get an order, she's going to get an aim. So maybe you give her an aim and a dodge. And then you have situational awareness. Or you give her, you give her, you know, an aim for retinue, but then you give her an order for a dodge. And, or if you wanted to double up, you could. You could just do however you want to, which is really, really nice with these Mandos. The only issue is, is that you got to keep them safe. You're just going to have to really keep them in cover as much and as long as possible. Now, their melee is okay. It's really good. It's the same as their range 1 to 2. So if you can get them into melee, that might be better. Yeah. I mean, Rook casts it's her, you know, dice goes down, but... You're keeping them safe for the most part. So that's gives you two extra points to kind of do with what you want. Maybe you give the Black Sun Vigo also the Recon Intel to kind of get in close. It's just kind of up to you on that one. I kind of gave Duel the Fates, Witch Magic, Embrace his or his imminent aggression, Seize with Power Recant, and Discretion. So, and all of these are going to be the same. But that's five activations. You've got four different ranks. So you're going to have to kind of be very careful. If you didn't want lead by example and you wanted improvised orders, that would also be pretty good, giving you an extra five points to kind of do with what you want. So maybe well, be nine, so it wouldn't quite be enough. If you got rid of those two things, you could have your eight points left to get your Super Commando Jetpack Rocket, which would be really nice at range four, because if you have retinue, and then, like I said, maybe you have two aims, maybe you shoot the Jetpack Rockets while you have all four people, and then... You've got another action. You don't have. You've got two aims, and so and his blasts anyway. So you don't have to worry about, you know, cover or anything. Critical one, since you don't surge. Impact one, and with the aims, just in case you do get some surges, it doesn't matter. But you probably don't have to aim much. You probably, you know, get the independent aim. Give yourself that dodge as the retinue, and then shoot your jetpack rockets. Use the aim, and then move. You still got a dodge. <clears throat> and situational awareness, so you can cancel those crits. Especially important on a very expensive unit like Mandos. The next mall bus skirmish list involves having a speeder truck with the back world medic to heal in case they need to, and the unorthodox tactician hopefully making the most out of everything else and giving everyone else as many things as possible because you're probably it's probably gonna die at some point. And you don't want to make it too expensive. The also, 
because of the speeder truck, I'm giving Maul Force Choke because he's not going to get shot at. He's not going to have to make any ranged attacks. And when he gets into melee, he'll be able to do his attack. And then he's going to also be able to Force Push. Or sorry, Force Choke and Force Push. And then he's also got his Witch Magic card, which will allow him to recover, giving you Force Choke back and Force Push back. And then taking off... Well, hold on. Let's take a look at it real quick. So... You must nominate Maul. When building a command hand, treat this card as it has one pip. Remove up to two wound tokens and any number of poison or immobilized tokens from Maul. So if you did have burst of speed on here, you know, instead of force push or something like that, that's going to get rid of that immobilized, and then you'll be able to recover force push. But yeah, so force choke, force push, and then again into the fray just to make sure he get those he gets those surge tokens, especially for the attack or anything like that, because you can use the surge for attack or defense, but only dodges for defense, which gives him surge to defense. But, you know, into the fray with as many other five or six other activations that could be close to him, possibly, then you might get some extra stuff. Again, if you wanted, if, he, if the speed truck wasn't there, maybe give him that up close and personal and saber throw. So he gets that dodge whenever he makes saber throw. But again, how many times are you going to use saber throw? And then you have your pie cap over here with improvised orders because, again, you've you've kind of got a lot of things here. If you don't want improvised orders because it's such a small list, then go ahead and go with vigilance because, you know, you're handing out orders for the most part sometimes, and you're only giving it either to Maul or the, the AA5. You probably don't need... What I just had on there. You probably don't need to have improvised orders. So Vigilance would be good. You've got your disruptors on both Pike Syndicate's foot soldiers, but you have a capo here and then just a normal foot soldier here. So that kind of focuses again on Maul, and then your Pikes just shooting and staying in the back, kind of doing what they can for objectives if they need to, while Maul is safely transported across the field. Since he's also going to start out with a wound and only have five health, then yeah, you kind of want to keep him in a bus, especially if he's not getting very many dodges. So nothing really crazy there. That's just instead of the pikes, you know, kind of giving him, or, or sorry, instead of the black sun, kind of just giving him some more pikes. Now with Saxon, let's go with Saxon and Mandos. So we have our two pikes and to get foot soldiers because we need to have at least one, as far as I'm aware, I think, possibly two, I think. Let's see. Yeah, you only need one, but we're going to give him two. We're going to give him the Pike Capo and the Whip Soldier because we're not going to have any other Pike Commander Capo, basically. So we want to raise their courage to two so that it still kind of takes them a little bit more to panic. And they're going to be in the back with the Electro Whip, especially because either elimination, pivotal positions, breach, or control. So if it's Pivotal positions that are coming towards you, you can hopefully stop them. Breach, you can keep them in the back and with the immobilized tokens, prevent them from getting into your deployment zone. And then with control, you know, they do have a pretty close range attack. That's not that bad. It just kind of depends. You don't have to have it. It's just an extra way of getting them in. Now with Saxon, I have up close and personal because he's going to be making hopefully some ranged attacks. Situational awareness because <clears throat> some of his cards you know one of his cards is going to give him a dodge but then he can take a dodge if he needs to you know he doesn't really have anything that's going to give him a free dodge but yeah then he's got his saxon combat shield which will recover every other turn which is super nice you don't have to have the jetpack rockets i feel like in skirmish but in case you wanted it i think it's not going to be that bad because some people are going to want to bring an atsd into skirmish sometimes or Maybe you want to, there's a lot of heavy cover and you don't want cover. That's going to help you. Even though you do have Sharpshooter 1, this does have Blast. So, and Cycle. So, it's nice to have. And because everything's going to be so close and you're probably going to wind up in melee, having the Flame Projector is probably going to be really nice and life saving. Especially if, you, if there's droids or, you know, you have packed out units, kind of like the Pike Syndicate. So, there's going to be at least six of them. So, yeah. And then I have two Mando Super Commandos. Mando Super Commandos. Yeah, sorry. With the Gunslinger. So you don't have to have the Gunslinger. Maybe you wanted to save cut cost and save it in eight extra, eight extra points. You could just go with the normal guy at 24 points. 
the Mandalorian just super commando normal guy with the two surge tokens instead of lethal because you're going to have lethal one with this one. So anytime you spend a name, you're going to gain Pierce. And with Elimination and Pivotal and everything being really close, I figured that would probably be the best rather than maybe going with the Marksman or Rook with one of them. <clears throat> but yeah, this is just two Mandos, three Mando units, I should say, all together with just some Pikes in the back. Nothing too crazy. Still just five activations for the most part for all of my skirmish lists. And then the last skirmish list also has five activations. This time I am running the dark saber with Maul to give him cunning and surge to crit. I do have the pike capo with vigilance. And then I have the, you know, regular two disruptors on both of them, but I packed pike capo on one of them. You know, if you honestly needed to, you could just go with the regular pike foot soldier in case you wanted to cut on some points and, or not cut on some points, but at least have an extra soldier for them because you already have the pie capo here who can make sure that the courage is fine if you needed to get rid of vigilance and maybe go with lead by example that would also be pretty good and then you have the black sun enforcers with the black sun vigo and targeting scopes you don't have the black sun vigo in here normally for anything so and in, in case you did want to have lead by example you know you could it's just you're just removing some suppression. So, yeah. That's up to you. It just kind of depends. That gives you 499. Still, Maul, I gave burst to speed, force push, tenacity, so that he can run and burst into melee as fast as possible. So, like I said, you could use the witch magic card that he has to get rid of the immobilize and then recover your force push. And he's got tenacity. So that anytime he's going to get that wound, he's going to be able to add to the Darksaber, giving him the 6 black and the extra red for 7 dice instead of the <clears throat> 8 like normal. If you didn't want the Darksaber, again, you can get rid of the Darksaber, have him have 5 red and 4 white in melee. No surging, but, you know, it, I mean, I don't think it really matters. You can use those extra 10 points probably for the Black Suns to give themselves maybe grenades. It's kind of up to you. But yeah, I, I like this one. Again, mostly because I'm not running a lot of Darksaber with Maul. They kind of equal out, but it's just it's up to you. If you don't have a commander, then definitely put the Darksaber on there. If you have some Pike Capos or anyone else, you probably don't need the Darksaber because you, you already will have your commander. So... So if you like these, I'm going to leave the links to these lists down below. If you liked this video, go ahead and like, subscribe. And yeah, if you've got anything to add, go ahead and leave a comment down below. It will help. And if you haven't, go ahead and head to the Discord channel and go ahead and subscribe or come on in and start adding to either the different lists, anything you want to do, talking about stuff, you know, rebel lists. <clears throat> kind of just going over different things and accepting different or proposing different lists. This is an 11 activation triple Wookiee, triple Ton list with R2. 11 activations, you know, kind of bare bones, but it it's a lot of HP on your guys. Not that bad. And then the other Rebel list that I had come up with, with was with Din, R2, the speeder with Wookiees. And then you've got your pikes, and then your sniper, and your three guys. I think 11 activations as well. Not really sure, but yeah. So go ahead and join that, and then head to thebirdacademy.com if you're looking for really easy personal training to make sure you're doing everything right. Everything else is, you know, I'm working on more things. You know, I've tried to come up with some online coaching stuff. So if you're interested in signing up, you know, there was a two-month difference for me here. And then if you want to build muscle, just you can – do that soon because I've got to – I'm working on it today to, again, to put on some more of the back-end stuff. But, yeah, go ahead and head to the Burn Academy for more. And if you're interested in online coaching, just let me know. All right, guys. I will catch you in the next video talking about the AATs and the CIS gun line. But I will catch you all later. Peace.